All right, lovies, it's obviously Dr. Eric, and today we're going to talk about arithmetic sequence. I've heard it pronounced a thousand ways, so we're just going to move with it. Okay, what is it? Well, basically, it's adding. It's fancy words for you start at some kind of number and you keep adding or subtracting. Remember, there's really no such thing as subtraction. Subtraction is just adding the inverse or adding the negative or adding the opposite. We just call it subtraction. That's all this is. It's adding and subtracting. Now, on the formula sheet, you'll need to either maybe do the recursive formula or the explicit formula. The recursive formula is used when you know one of the numbers and you need to do the next number. And it's basically like whatever number you know, you add or subtract. The explicit formula is used when you need to figure out like, if I did this sequence for 1,527 numbers, what number would I get? And that's when you would use the explicit. So let's talk about what these different options are. So first, it says determine if it's an arithmetic sequence. Remember, the main thing I need you to remember for arithmetic, this is what you're writing down in your notes, is arithmetic sequence is always add or subtract, never multiplying or dividing. That's geometric sequence and that's like 60 some slides away from now. We're just talking about adding, subtracting. So let's see if these problems right here are arithmetic or not. And if they are, we're going to fill in the formula because like, why not? It's super easy. So let's see, how do I go from 35 to 32? Well, maybe you know this in your head, but if you don't, this is the calculator time. Hello, Kelki, our friend. I'm going to just open up the scientific calculator um, real quick instead. And we're just going to do, well, what's 35 minus 32? Three. Okay, so I know over here I went down by three. So now I'm gonna say, okay, well, if I have 32 and I go down to 29, how much do I go down by? Three. If I'm at 29 and I go down to 26, how much did I go down by? Three. Do you notice how I keep going down by three? That means our common difference is negative three. And now that we know that information, the formula is crazy easy. Watch what we're gonna do. First, we're gonna write down the formula. Let's do the recursive formula first. This is what's amazing. Anytime you see a sub n or n, a sub n minus one, that doesn't change. So I'm gonna write down a sub n equals a sub n minus one and then whatever the common difference is. So I'm gonna write just the formulas first. Let's look at the explicit. I'm gonna just write the explicit formula. And how did I know this formula? From the formula sheet. Like, you need to use the formula sheet. You are making your life ridiculously hard if you don't use the formula sheet or the calculator. So you need to pay attention to the formula sheet and the calculator. Watch how easy this is. For the recursive formula, all we do is we erase the letter D and we write in whatever our common difference is. Even though this looks ridiculously ugly, that is the recursive formula. That's the answer. It's not like middle school math when you would get like 27 as an answer. It stays in this ugly formula form. Let's take a look at the explicit. This A sub one it's just a fancy way of saying what's the first number? What's our first number in the sequence? 35. So I'm going to write 35. Then you already know what the D is. Negative 3. Negative 3. And this is almost done. The reason why it's almost done is in math, we don't typically like a positive and negative touching each other. So I'm just going to erase this little teeny weeny positive. And that's the answer. Like, that's the answer. That's it. That's the formula. So if it said to you, what is like the 20th term in your calculator? And it's not asking for the 20th term, but let's say it was. You would just type 35 minus 3. But instead of typing N, 
I mean, you can type n, like write the formula first, but it says, but I want the 20th term. So instead of n, you just type in 20, and that's the answer. Let's say it wants the thousandth term. So instead of n, you type in a thousand, and that's the answer. Let's look at the next one. All right, first we're gonna see, does it keep moving the same amount? Well, how do I get from 34 to negative 64? We're gonna do it the same way. Negative 34 minus negative 64. But Dr. Eric, there's two negatives in a row. This decimals calculator, totally smart. Leave the two negatives, 30. So this means I go up by 30. So I'm gonna still keep the same pattern of the second number minus the third number. So we're gonna do negative 64 minus negative 94. What do I get? 30. Negative 94 minus whatever the next number is, two negatives in a row, calculator smart, 30. So that means each one of these babies goes up by 30. So that means our common difference is 30. So how do we write the formula? I'm gonna just write the explicit one because this is the one you're gonna most likely get on your test. Um, I don't know why I just wrote that. a sub one plus d times n minus one. All right, so remember, super easy. This a sub one is a fancy way of saying what's the first number? My first number is negative 34. This D is just what we figured out, 30. And this is done. That's the answer. Let's scroll to the bottom. That's the answer in terms of, yes, it's arithmetic. The, co co the common difference is 30, and that's the explicit formula. Okay, now this wants to find a term that happens down the road. So for these type, I actually prefer using the graphing calculator. So I'm gonna refresh my screen. Here's another calculator question. And instead of writing a sub n, this is what I want you to write into your calculator. F of n, okay? And really the ideal thing is to write F of x. Because what we're gonna do is instead of writing the letter n, we're gonna write x because we're in the graphing calculator. So I'm gonna write f of x instead of writing a sub n. Then I'm gonna write the formula that they gave me, and that's it. Now, this is where it's just so amazing. See how it says a34? On my next line, I'm just writing f34. That's my answer, that's it. So the main thing to remember does it give us a pretty graph? Yes, it gives us a pretty graph, but we don't need the pretty graph for this problem. All we need is the graphing calculator feature that lets us do functions. Let's look at this another one. I'm gonna, instead of having my a sub n, I'm writing f of x equals. Instead of writing n, I'm writing x, so I'm looking at number nine. And then it says it wants a27, so instead of 34, I just type in 27. That's the answer. That's it. Okay, simple graphing calculator question. Anytime you need the missing value, all you do is just turn the a sub n into an f of x. And then on the next line, whatever number you need, you plug that in. So I'll leave those other two for you to do. Here, it wants you to write the formula. Remember, you know how to do this already. You just copy it from the formula sheet. And instead of writing a sub one, we erase it and we write whatever the first number is, 28. Instead of writing the letter D, we erase it and we write the difference, done. That's it. Now. It says, I think it says find the first five. So if you did need to find the first five, I'm gonna type this in. Remember, instead of a sub n, we just we do f of x. And we write x instead of n's. Okay, so there's our line. Here's where it becomes super easy. It wants the first five. f of one, f of two, 
f of 3, f of 4, f of 5. Oops, let me take out f and then f of 5. And those are the answers. It's that simple. That's it. 28, 38, 48, 58, 68, done. Bye, guys.